What's up, Barnhill family, and welcome back to your home for all things combat sports. Do you? So Nick Raul Rosas Jr. got back in the win column at Noche UFC mm -hmm. last night, uh, and it's always good to see a young man respond like that after a loss. You know, being 18 years old and being in the biggest promotion that the sport has, being on the main card in the feature bout of what was a big event, a title fight evening for the UFC, there's a lot of pressure on this young man. And I'm very cautiously optimistic about how the UFC is going to handle his career because after all, he's fighting at Bantamweight. Bantamweight is potentially the most stacked division in the entire sport. And at only 18 years old, he's offered three fights a year. If he keeps winning those fights, he's going to keep bumping up in competition. And at 135, it doesn't take a whole lot of bumps before you are in absolute deep waters swimming with the sharks. So what did you think of his performance and how do you think the UFC should manage Rosas Jr.'s next couple of fights? Well, the UFC has to be very careful. They need to be smart with how they manage him. He's only 18 and I don't think he needs to fulfill all three fights per year like a lot of fighters do, especially ones that are in their 30s and late 20s and whatnot. 18 years old is so young. He's still 10 years plus away from his physical prime. And I would love to see somebody with his skill level at the young age of 18 fight into their physical prime. But if you jump the horse and he starts fighting, and by the time he's 25 years old, he's got you know 12, 15, 20 fights in the UFC, we might not be able to see him extend his career that long. So while I'm sure he's that young gung-ho fighter that's hungry, wants to take on anybody at any time, all that's fine and good, but this is a business and he needs to treat it like a business. And at the same time, the UFC needs to treat it like a business. It's really awesome to say that there's an 18 year old on our roster. And as a matter of fact, he hangs with everybody. There's no denying that Ra Raul Rosas Jr. belongs in the UFC, that he probably ran through the regional scene in Mexico like a knife through hot butter. Like he was probably just dicing up young people and they're like all right this is just not even fair he's undefeated let's throw him in you know into the sharks and see how he swims he's come out he's now won a couple fights in the ufc he did you know stub his toe in one of them but to see him come back off a loss and then get the job done against a game guy like terrence mitchell who's 33 years old also looked about 18 if i if I'm yeah saying, he, he looked way younger than 33 yeah, i was surprised it, it, to see that on the stats yeah it was really crazy but Great opposition for Raul to go in there against. I thought the fight was competitive while it lasted, and he did remind us that he was 18 years old when the bell started because when you saw that fight start, both of those guys came in real quickly, and then the pace was just electric. It almost looked like an amateur pace, if you will, and I don't mean that in a derogatory way. Amateurs fight at a very high pace. It's almost the nerves and the tension and everything like that. They don't have the experience yet or the age or the mentality to slow things down and remember that this is a 15-minute fight. I think even Dominic Cruz was saying, like, I'd love to see what pace these guys are at halfway through this fight at the eight-minute mark because if they keep this up, they probably won't make it there. And uh, he was right about that. About a minute later, Raul Rosas Jr. got the job done. And that's because Terrence Mitchell moved into a really nice, clean uh, left hook. Raul Rosas Jr. has some great power. And while this was one of those impressive performances inside the octagon, you also have to look at the entire production and the entire show that he was involved in. His walkout was great. He understands, I got to put on for my people. This is a big Mexican independence night. I'm now one of the, the leading faces in Mexican MMA fighting. Let me put on you know, my big hat. Let me put on the music that they love. I'm going to walk out. I'm going to you know, see my family next to the, to the octagon. I'm going to show a lot of respect. I'm going to get my hand raised. I'm going to do really well on the microphone, which at 18 years old is very difficult. There's a lot of guys in their 30s that are on the UFC's fight cards, and they still don't know how to handle the microphone when given to them. For 18 years old, he's doing a great job. I think inside the octagon, outside, the X's and O's, the stuff he's doing on the microphone, everything is very good, A+. Plus, and as long as you let this guy have a low simmer to the top, we could see a major star on our hands. Yeah, you know, is Raul Rosas going to be the next John Jones where he's a champion at 21 years old? I doubt it, right. especially at Bantamweight. You know, could John even come back, 21-year-old John, and insert himself into light heavyweight right now, given where the competition and where the sport has moved and become a champion at 21? You know, I don't know the answer to right. that question. So I think it's going to take some time and some years. 
And if you want to see what not to do, just look at the way that Bellator managed Aaron Pico. Right. This kid, they everybody on the planet, including all the talking heads and the pundits, gassed this kid up like he's going to be the next John Jones. He's going to be a champ at 20. And what happened? He ended up with like a 500 record or worse. And now he's just getting himself back on track and, and coming into his own. And I think he lost a large part of his career that he'll, he'll never get back. And right. so I hope that's not the case for Raul, Raul Rosas Jr. He does have all of the it factors. He's good on the mic. As you said, I think he prefers English. Mm -hmm. That's his first language, but he also speaks Spanish, obviously the Mexican heritage. So he saluted the crowd in English, but then immediately because it was Noche UFC and Mexican Independent Night, he knew who was in the bleachers and he also spoke to them in Spanish as well, which I think was very, very smart thing for him to do. Um, I think a lot of North American fans are going to become a fan of this young man as he continues to grow. But the UFC, I think, needs to slow the pace down. I think I don't think he needs to be a three fight per year kind of fighter. I think he needs to be a one or two fight per year kind of fighter for the next one or two years and then bump it up to three fights a year after that. Because after all, he's not far away from people like Saeed Nurmagomedov in the yeah. rankings. I mean, if you want to start talking about who he should be matched up against as far as the rankings are concerned, that's who you're talking about. Right. And that's a really scary proposition for an 18-year-old young man. So I think the UFC needs to slow the roll a little bit with this kid. Let him build him on social media, build him, you know, if they're doing a, another evening like this and he's not on the card, let him hop on the mic for a few minutes on the on the Deportes version of the broadcast, things like that to kind of build his stardom without making him fight every three or four months and then having to usher him right into the worst of competition at Bantamweight. So it's a tightrope act for the UFC, but I think if they play it right, Rosas Jr. can actually be a star. Oh, I think he absolutely can be. And you have to remember, there's been some young fighters that have done great things in the sport. Think about Max Holloway. He's like 31 years old right now, but it feels like he's been in the UFC for 20 years. Yeah. So we're talking about somebody who's even younger than him, who entered the UFC even younger than he did. And at a decade from now, he's still not even going to be Max Holloway's current age. Right. So we just need to slow the roll and let him work outside of the octagon as well as inside the octagon. And that will let him grow and evolve as a human, evolve as a fighter, develop his character. Because everybody knows, you know, uh, fighters have a bit of a character. And whether you're an amplified fighter like Colby Covington, who basically turns on the character and turns it off, or you're somebody who's purely candid and just a, a wild card like a Sean Strickland, you do have a bit of a character if you want to be a successful person in this. I see him forming his character already, and I really like the direction he's going. But that's going to take some refinement. It's going to take some years, and it's going to take his mind developing more and more. You know, people say, scientists always say, it, it's not until you're 25 years old that your brain is fully developed. So he's got seven years before his brain, quote unquote, is even fully developed. And I don't want to see him be one of those guys that's super exciting, goes for the kill, goes for the knockout, and does the type of stuff he does against Terrence Mitchell for the next seven years before he even develops his brain fully and gets into his physical prime. Because that could take some years off of his life, fighting like that constantly and to see this kid in the UFC at 18 years old doing what he's doing so well already, it would almost be a shame if we didn't get to see him do it a decade from now when he's just now entering his prime. So I think the sky's the limit for this kid. I'd really like to see them move him up slowly. And uh, like you said, stay away from Murderer's Row for right now. But if you can get the highlight reel extended and keep it going, keep this momentum going... He's right where he needs to be. I think the UFC has a star, and as long as they manage his career properly, you could see him last quite a long time in the UFC. Absolutely.